Guys, I don't really know what to say anymore because every time I think the Bulls are making strides in the right direction, we take a bunch of steps back. I can't figure out this team at all. I said it before the season started, what I want to see from this Bulls team the most is consistency. Consistency in their level of play, no matter the competition. Consistency in putting effort and competing every night. And tonight is just another example of that lack of consistent play. So what's going on everyone? You're listening to Bull Central here. Hope you're all doing well. Now before I get into the post game, as you know, I had a giveaway for this game for a lucky winner who predicted the score correctly for a $100 gift card. And after looking over the comments from the video, unfortunately no one won this time around because... About 95% of you had the Bulls winning this one, myself included. Uh, don't worry though, I plan on redoing the same giveaway as last time. You know, it was a much more exciting when we had a winner. So just make sure that you're subscribed or have the bell notifications on or just tune into the video so you don't miss the giveaway announcement. So after a crushing win where the Bulls dismantled the magic, and yes, I know it's the magic and they were shorthanded, but hey, so were the Bulls. Then they come out and lose to one of the worst teams in the league without Westbrook and their starting center in Thomas Bryant. Now guys, I know it doesn't help when uh, as a team you learn that one of your key players in Lowry Markinen is out for an extended period of time. And yes, he is a key member of this team. I know some people don't think so, but he's the Bulls' second leading scorer and a big who enables the team to stretch the floor on offense. But that aside, even with no Markinen, no Wendell, no Otto, this shouldn't have been a game the Bulls lose. And I say that because the Wizards are a team that is struggling to find themselves, having little continuity. And after that game against the Magic, we've seen the Bulls do well in playing small ball without Lowry and Wendell. And it's games like this that the Bulls have to win, especially when you have guys out because you know it's going to be hard to weather the storm while your starting center and power forward are out. So you kind of have to expect the Bulls are going to lose a good amount of games without those two. So for the ones against other underperforming teams, this is your chance to win a game and biding a little more time until your big men get back. As for the game itself, I mean, the Bulls were kind of back up to their old tricks. Careless turnovers, poor shot selection, not moving the ball well, and when they were moving the ball, they just looked a little chaotic uh, with little control of the flow of offense. and. Uh, I hate to say it, but seeing Levine back up to his old tricks and taking ill-advised shots down the stretch is a bit unsettling for the Bulls. Now, I will say that that very last shot, that last possession where he drove to the basket for the layup, that actually was a smart play. I almost was certain uh, he was going to pull up and jack a three from the logo, but no, he took his time, made a calculated decision, was able to lose his man, and had a wide open drive to the basket, but the problem was... He missed the layup, a layup that he normally always makes. We've seen him do it a hundred times. And I know he was complaining about being fouled in that last play. And sure, there might have been some slight contact, but no, he really just missed the layup. Now, I know it's not fair to Zach to put the blame on him because let's be real, without Markinen and Wendell, he's carrying most of the offensive burden and keeping this team in game since Kobe White has been not showing up whatsoever. More on him in a second. And when you look at Levine's numbers, they're not bad. 35 points, just a little under 50% shooting from the field, 6 assists, but it's just hard because I need to see Zach show up in those clutch moments because, again, that's what franchise players do. Now, I don't even know where to start with Kobe White. I mean, I guess I'll, I'll start with something positive in that he's been rebounding the ball pretty well for a point guard. Uh, I feel there were quite a few possessions where he was fighting for the rebound with a bunch of of guys all around him who were much bigger than him. Uh, he had eight rebounds tonight, so that, that was good to see. But for Kobe, I just feel like more often than not, he just seems lost on both ends of the floor. You know, before it was just his defense where you would kind of cringe watching him play on that end, but it was always made up for by his elevated offense. But even now on offense, he just looks lost, not only in playmaking and running the floor, but his shot as well, it just isn't falling. He's really struggling, shooting just 37% in his last 10 games. And for a guy who started out the season so strong on offense, I mean, I even had hot takes in here that 
White and Levine would be the best backcourt in the league in a few years' time, and that's looking pretty remote now. I even found this poll. I did it just a few weeks ago on who you guys thought was the Bulls' second best player, and the results were overwhelmingly Kobe White. So I don't know what's going on with him. All I know is my biggest hesitancy with him from the get-go uh, was that I needed to see him play like we did at the end of this last season and the start of this season consistently. Now, my hope is he'll figure it out and get out of the slump that he's in. Uh, I, I know I say it all the time. He's only 20. It's his second year in the league. He's going to go through some growing pains, but I do start to wonder if it would make sense having him come off the bench behind Sadoransky, who has shown to be a better facilitator. Uh, Thaddeus Young, you know, he himself had another good game, although he did have four turnovers and had a pretty bad air ball late in the game on a possession that we really needed. But outside of that, 14 points, six assists, five rebounds, two steals, and a block off the bench. I mean, you can't ask for much more uh, from a guy, you know, that he's just doing his job and providing that leadership for the second year unit. And I don't know what has been happening with Carrot Temple. Ever since I made that video about him and his journey through the NBA, uh, he just has not been able to knock down shots. 1 for 8 tonight, 0 for 5 from 3. Now I know Gafford has been struggling in recent games, but he actually looked decent tonight despite some questionable de defensive misses. I mean, he even hit a jumper. Uh, that was a surprise. I was just surprised he didn't see a little more playing time given how shorthanded we are in the paint. He only played 15 minutes, he had 10 points and 5 rebounds. I would have liked to have seen him play a bit more, uh, given that he was having himself a nice game. Anyway, what's done is done. I mean, I guess we can't be too hard on the Bulls because we are suffering from injuries to key players. Again, story of our lives as Bulls fans. Our team just cannot seem to stay healthy no matter the season. But I would like to see the Bulls make some adjustments and not only their effort on the floor for the whole 48 minutes, because even when you have injuries, there's still no excuse for a players not to actually compete the entire 48 minutes. But on top of that, I would also like to see their shot selection improved. And then, of course, defense as well. But that's always kind of been the case. The Bulls will be taking on the Pelicans on Wednesday, so we'll get to see Zion and Brandon Ingram come to town. Uh, I'll have another live chat for that game, which by the way, I know some of you have been asking where I'm at in the chat, especially at the end of games. Well, that's because I generally like to stay focused on the game. Also, depending on what type of stream or network you're watching on, some of you might be slightly ahead of me and I don't want any spoilers. So just letting you know, that's why sometimes I go a little silent at the end of the game if it's a close game. Uh, don't forget to join the Discord as well, guys. It's free and a great place to chat about Bulls basketball. We've got a great community going on over there, so feel free to check it out if you're interested. I'll leave a link in the description. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and I will catch you in the next one.